Hi everyone, I'm attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Lawco in Colorado and you're watching All Up In Your Business. On this episode of All Up In Your Business, we're going to talk about how much it costs to register a trademark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office or USPTO. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and check the description for links to additional information and resources. All right, so it's no secret that probably the best way to protect your business's brand, like its name or logo, is with a registered trademark. Registering a trademark with the USPTO is really the best way to secure whatever brand element you have, your business name, logo, and other trademarks. So if you've decided to go that route, how much should you expect to pay for it? Now, if you're not new to my channel, if you've seen some of my videos before, you can probably guess the short answer to this question. Come on, everybody. I know you know what I'm about to say. Let's say it together. It depends. It always depends. Everything always depends. So the cost to file a trademark application and get your trademark registered is gonna depend on a few different factors. And of course, it also depends on if you're doing it yourself versus working with an attorney or having somebody help you. I'm gonna start off by just talking about fees involved, the USPTO's fees. So if you're filing the application on your own, what are the actual costs and fees associated with the application? I'll touch on lawyer fees and how much those might cost towards the end of the video. So the first thing it's gonna depend on is which application you use. If you file the TEAS Plus application versus the TEAS Standard application, the fees are gonna be different. Now, you can check back to one of my older videos where I talk about the differences between TEAS Plus and TEAS Standard. I'll link to that in the description. I go into a lot more detail about what the differences are. But the initial difference is the filing fee. So for the TEAS Plus application, it's gonna be 250 bucks per class of goods and services. For the TEAS Standard application, it's gonna be 350 per class of goods and services. So what do I mean when I say per class? On the application, we have to identify the goods and or services with which we are using the trademark. What is it that we're selling with this trademark? We have to let the USPTO know. There are different classes, different categories to an extent of goods and services. I think maybe 45, something in the 40s, around 45 different classes. And sometimes we need to file in multiple classes if we're selling multiple types of goods and services. And so that filing fee, whether it's 250 or 350, is going to be per class. So let's assume we're just filing in one class of goods and services and we're using that TEAS Plus application. It's gonna be a one-time fee of 250 bucks to file the application. Now, this TEAS Plus application, there are some requirements that go along with it. Certain requirements that we have to meet in order to benefit from that reduced fee with the TEAS Plus application. Again, check back to that other video where I go into more detail about what those requirements are. But if we fail to meet all of those requirements, if we submit the application and it turns out we didn't meet all the requirements, they're gonna want their money. They're gonna want that extra 100 bucks. So if we file the TEAS Plus application, but we're missing one of those requirements, there's gonna be an additional $100 per class fee that will be due to the USPTO. So that's the first difference. Are we using a TEAS Plus or the TEAS Standard application? The second difference has to do with the filing basis. So again, when we submit the application, we have to let the USPTO know if we are filing on a 1A current use basis or a 1B intent to use basis. Current use is kind of what it sounds like. It means we are currently using the trademark in commerce in connection with our goods and services. Our goods and services are available for people to purchase and we are using our trademark in connection with those goods and services currently as of the date that we file the application. Or we can file on a 1B intent to use, which again, 
is what it sounds like. We're not currently using the trademark, but we intend to use it. So with that 1B intent to use filing basis, at some point later on after we file the application, after an examining attorney has been assigned, after the examining attorney has looked over the application, after they've done their search to make sure there are no confusingly similar trademarks already, the examining attorney is gonna issue a notice of allowance. And once we get this notice of allowance, we have six months to file a statement of use showing that we are now using the trademark in commerce, or we can request a six month extension. And we can continue requesting extensions for up to about three years. So with that 1B intent to use application, we have to file a statement of use and or request extensions at some point in the process and there are gonna be filing fees associated with that. So with the statement of use, it's a $100 per class filing fee to file the statement of use. If we are not ready to file a statement of use and we need to request an extension, it's $125 per class for that extension request. Those fees don't apply if we are filing on a current use 1A basis because we're basically already giving them the statement of use when we submit the application. So we don't have that additional filing later on, therefore we don't have that additional filing fee. So looking at all that, if we're trying to keep our fees as low as possible, we wanna use the TEAS Plus application and we wanna file on a 1A current use basis. Otherwise with the 1B intent to use basis, we're gonna have those filing fees or 125 per class for the statement of use or the extension requests. For most people, most applicants, that's gonna be it. Of course, there are situations where additional fees might come up. Sometimes we need to uh, divide an application, kind of split it into two. Sometimes we'll have to deal with an opposition proceeding, which means we're dealing with the TTAB or a Trademark Trial and Appeal Board, and there are going to be fees associated with that kind of an issue. So, you know, it's not always the case that these are the only fees. There are certainly instances where other filing fees can come up, but you know, the majority of instances for most people, it's just going to be that initial filing fee and then potentially those filing fees for the statement of use or extension requests if we filed on a 1B basis. So great, the application is, has gone through and our trademark is registered. Are there going to be other fees? Yes, of course there are. What are they going to be? Of course, it depends. But so after the trademark is registered, a few years after it's registered, uh, I think five years, maybe it's four years, no, we'll just say four to five years after the trademark's registered, we have to renew it, basically. A trademark can stay registered forever, potentially, as long as we are continuing to use the trademark and we keep the trademark registration good, we keep these maintenance filings up to date, the trademark can remain registered forever. But we have to make sure we file these things called declarations. There are different types of declarations that we can file, um, and again, it kind of depends on the timing. We have to file a first one in that four to five year time span, and then we have to file a second declaration about four or five years after that, and then we have to keep filing them every 10 years thereafter, as long as we want to keep the trademark registration active. And so depending on the type of declaration that we're filing, those fees are going to range from about 300 per class up to about 500 per class. So there are those additional fees, but they come up, you know, later on after the trademark's already been registered. So all in all, at a bare minimum, the absolute least you can expect to pay to file a trademark application and get a trademark registration is gonna be $250, assuming we're doing it on a 1A current use basis and using that TEAS Plus application. It's gonna be at a bare minimum, 250. Now, of course, this is assuming you're doing it yourself. With all things having to do with the law, and especially trademark registration, uh, I always recommend working with an attorney because it looks kind of simple from the outset, but the trademark registration process is actually pretty complex. So of course, it's always best to have an attorney help you with the process. So what might we expect to pay if we wanna work with an attorney? Again, you guys, say it with me, it depends. Trademark attorneys, attorneys in general, our fees vary a lot. Uh, some are gonna be a lot cheaper, some are gonna be way more expensive. But instead 
I don't want you guys focusing just on the fee of the attorney, not just what are they charging, but we want to know what are we actually getting for what we pay this attorney. Not all trademark attorneys provide the same service. One trademark attorney might charge a few hundred bucks, whereas some others might charge a few thousand bucks. But what are you actually getting for that lawyer who pay who charges a few hundred? Are you getting the same thing as the lawyer who charges a few thousand? Typically not. Sometimes if the fee for the lawyer is on the lower end, you might have additional fees that may be owed later on. Let's say if the USPTO issues an office action against your application, the attorney might charge more to respond to those office actions. I'll tell you guys about what I charge. So I have an all-inclusive trademark registration package called Brand Bombshell. All-inclusive means it includes every step of the application process. So we start with a thorough clearance search beforehand to make sure the trademark's even available for you to use and register because it's a, if it's not, then why are we even bothering with this application? Anyway, we'll start with the clearance search. Then we have a strategy session to talk about the clearance search, talk about maybe we need to strategize with regards to those goods or services, Sometimes we need to be a little creative with that, depending on what the clearance search shows us. And then once that strategy session's done, we make sure we have all the details correct, and then we file the application, of course. Most applicants, most trademark applications, in a lot of circumstances, are gonna receive some kind of an office action. It's pretty common. Uh, when that happens, we respond to the office action, and there's no additional charge. So that's all included. Every step of the process from search to registration and sending you the certificate is included in my fee, which is $2,900. So I'm probably somewhere on the higher end of my service costs, but it's because I include every step of the process versus other attorneys who may charge less but if that office action comes up, there you're gonna have to fork up some additional money if you want them to respond to the office action. So of course, it always depends on what exactly you're getting for the cost. It might depend on the location. Attorneys in bigger cities might charge more than an attorney would in a smaller town. It might also depend on the law firm. A large national law firm is typically gonna charge more than a you know, sm small office or solo attorney like myself. And then of course, there are options that are kind of in the middle of doing it yourself and working with an attorney. I offer an online DIY course called Brandish where I walk you through step by step how to prepare for and complete and submit the trademark application with the USPTO. So if you're not quite ready to work with an attorney, if you can't afford to work with an attorney, something like Brandish might be a good option. So you're keeping your costs low, but you're still getting some you know, hand holding, a little help from yours truly with the application process. That's all for this episode, folks. Drop a comment below, let me know what you think. And again, don't forget to check the description for links to additional information and resources. You can learn more about my trademark services or brandish my DIY trademark course in the description. I'll have links to both of those. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham, and I'll see you next time.